Welcome back. We are starting another art video. So with this week's art video, we are going to be talking all about coloring. And I made this little um, sign, <laughs> little paper, a uh, little reminder for everybody because I've been getting a lot of submissions that are more on this not good, no bueno side instead of the beautiful, good, bueno side. So you need to make sure that your coloring is on this side and hopefully not this side. So we're gonna go through this really quickly. What it says is number one, color inside the line. So you can see here with my tree that I did stay nice inside the lines. Now this doesn't mean that you can never go outside the lines. We're not perfect. You don't have to worry if you go out like maybe just a little bit every now and then. That's not a big deal. I'm trying to see if there's I think there was one somewhere that, like over here on this little sad face, I went out just a little bit. Again, we're not perfect. It's okay if you go outside the lines a little bit, but the goal is to make sure you're not doing this. So this is 100% scribble scrabble. This is not good, no bueno. So you need to make sure that you are not coloring like this. This is for our little itty bitty babies. This is not for our amazing awesome uh kids at school and this is kind of what we would be doing in class as well or you know that miss mobley would tell you oh, well you need to go back and color in some more or anything like that so make sure you're not doing this one number two color going one direction so with this one i went up and down that doesn't mean you have to go up and down for everything just make sure <coughs> excuse me just make sure that you are picking one direction whether it's up and down or diagonal like this tree down here um, and that you keep going that way so over here you can see that I was going up and down I was kind of going zigzag I was going horizontal and it doesn't end up looking that good even when you stay inside the lines it still doesn't look nearly as good as when you just go one direction. So make sure that you're trying to do that one for sure. And then third, no white spaces. So I've colored this tree very nice and I filled it all in. Now with crown, you are still gonna see some little white areas. That's not what I'm talking about with no white spaces. This is what I'm talking about with no white spaces. I see a lot of people that are leaving big empty areas and all that tells me is that you were rushing. Actually, all of these <laughs> tell me that you were rushing and that you weren't taking your time to make beautiful art. So if you're doing this, you need to make sure that you go in there and you color in some more to fill that all the way in because this is not finished. This is what I want to see. So hopefully that was a very uh, quick and nice description on what to avoid. We do not wanna be at this level. We wanna be over here in the good side. So make sure that you are following these three steps and your art will be beautiful. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch to our drawing. So this is the owl that we drew last week. Um, and this was my finished version. So we did color it nicely. Um, and I told you that you could wait until this week to color it because I wanted to go ahead and make a, a video um, to show you some of those techniques. So make sure that you are coloring nicely. If you already colored, then you won't have a lot to do this week in art. But if you did stop, um, like it said to you at the top of my assignment, then um, good. You're going to be coloring hopefully along with me here. So. What I'm gonna start with, um, maybe I'll start with a brown. Um, I made a dark brown up here. I think I'm gonna swap it out and go the other way here. So I like putting little rosy cheeks, but hmm, maybe we should make them rosy. Maybe I'll get a pink. Let's get a pink and make some rosy cheeks. So I'm just gonna add in a little oval on the cheeks and we didn't even draw this 
So if it was something you wanted to draw in, you could have done it in the drawing stage. I have already traced over my lines with marker. So remember when you are um, using a marker to go over lines you already drew, that is tracing. So it's gonna make it a little easier for you to see all of the lines um, once we finish coloring it. All right, so now I'm going to start coloring. Now since we outlined this nicely or we traced it with marker, you won't really have to do the hard outline um, like I usually like to do when coloring because it already has that hard outline. So I'm just going to lightly color inside and remember going one direction. So I think I'm gonna go up and down and if it, if it gets a little hard for you, remember you can always kind of move your paper around. Just make sure that you always go that same direction. So taking my time, I'm gonna make her eyelids um, a dark brown, I think. Or you could even color them a different color if you wanted to put makeup on your owl. I don't know if your owl is uh, all glammed up. But you could color the eyelids even. Like rainbow colors or whatever you want. I don't know what, what your owl is doing tonight. <laughs> So just remember up and down and you can tell that I am spending a little while on this. So I want you to take your time. I, I know I keep saying that in a lot of these videos, but I keep saying it because a lot of what I'm getting turned in looks super rushed from some people and, and that makes me sad. Make sure you're trying to take your time. And hopefully if we uh, separate this into drawing one week and coloring it the next, that will give you even more time to work on your art. So I just about have the head here colored. So even when you can't go all the way up and down, you can always just split it. Like maybe your hand, you probably don't have, has, <laughs> your hands are probably not as big as mine. So if you just need to go up and down right here, that's fine, and then you can go up and down right on top of it, or right above it. Now it will get a little hard around curves here, so if you need to go like a little bit of left to right, it's not a big deal when you're just filling in these little areas. Just make sure that you're not going all kinds of crazy directions. All right. Now I'm gonna go in and hopefully this looks good because it is not what we did on the first one. I'm gonna put some darker brown on the eyelids. I was trying to think of a different color maybe to put the eyes. On my first one, I did yellow because sometimes at night it looks like an owl's eyes are like glowing. But that's up to you. Whatever color you want to put. I'm going to use some orange on the beak. Something I really liked doing with the stars was tracing right over it. And I know it's not like coloring it really, but adding a little bit of color to the stars, since we can't really color them in since they're just lines, but then yeah, make it look like it glows a little bit. If you colored all of this in like a dark gray or a dark blue or even black, they would even pop more because it would be this bright color surrounded by dark colors. All right, we're gonna go down into the body here. And I wanted to show you a little bit on how I did this way um, with my coloring on my owl. So all I did here was I took a darker brown or just a regular brown and I split this top area up with a what type of line is this a zigzag so then you could pick um, which side hmm maybe we'll put dark on the top here and then you could fill it in 
and then move on to the next color in the lower part. So again, remember I am coloring a bit faster than you might. Hopefully you're not quite going this fast unless you're being careful. So make sure you are being careful when you are coloring. Now I did try and press hard. I might go back over that line and press a little bit harder because we didn't use marker for this line. We just made this line up. So we want it to stand out a little bit darker than the coloring that will be around it. That should be pretty good. Making sure they're not um, a bunch of open spaces. Now I'm gonna use a lighter brown um, for the bottom part here and fill in the rest of that top area. Feathers. So again, I am just going up and down since this is a bird, so it has feathers or it, it is fuzzy, kind of like um, a puppy dog <laughs> or any kind of animal, um, you need to be careful sometimes about the direction you pick. Because if you went left to right, if you went horizontal, it might not look quite as good. Um, but just another thing to kind of keep in mind. So... I'm gonna use this blue. This is my favorite blue here. It's called Cerulean. And I'm pressing hard with that zigzag. Oops. See, nobody's perfect. It's okay if you have little oopsies. Just make sure that you aren't going wow all over the place. Color all of that in. I'm gonna see if I can finish coloring his body, at least in this video. So I would say coloring this should take maybe 20 to 30 minutes. So I don't want this video to be that long for you guys, so I will stop it before I finish because I want this to be kind of a, a short video week so you guys can just get this guy finished. And then we're going to go from my favorite blue to my least favorite blue. This is called Cornflower and it's always really deceptive to me. Like I always expect it to be this beautiful blue color and then it comes out so light. <laughs> and it always disappoints me, it's sneaky. It's a little ninja blue. <laughs> but even though it's not my favorite blue, I really like how it looks with all of these other colors. So when I decided on my colors here, I chose two dark ones and two light ones. So I have a dark brown and a dark blue, and then I have a light brown and a light blue. So you don't have to use browns and blues. Uh, you could use whatever color you want. If you want to have a rainbow owl, go for it. So we're not really talking about um, real colors here that you would see on an owl. You can use your imagination some with that. So one more time. Pressing hard. Now with crowns sometimes you can press hard and it doesn't um, really come out that nice or it doesn't look like it really <laughs> went um, darker. So just go back over that line. Do another layer on it. And let's see, 
darker brown up here. And then we'll finish with the light brown. I have a hard time figuring out which of these I like more. Filling in those little white spots that I missed. All right, and our light brown. So if you don't have as many colors as I do, that is fine. I think all of you should at least have crowns. So if you don't have any crowns, you might need to ask your mom or your dad or your grown-ups um, to get you some crowns. And just make sure you're taking care of them. All done with the body. Now I want to show you all I did with the wings is I made a W or an upside down M for some more feathers sort of inside his wings there. So what you can do is again take your dark brown you're gonna do a diagonal line and then a really kind of short zigzag so I just do two up, down, I guess that's three, three diagonal lines. So just a little bit of a zigzag there, or just more diagonal lines. Diagonal line, pressing hard, and then go back over it once, up, down, one more time now here I'm going to go at a diagonal while coloring it in so again remember whatever direction you pick to go to color just make sure you keep going that direction and I do that over here I'm going to move my paper a little bit so it's a little bit easier to color at a diagonal for me. All right, and then Mama's tempted to use blue. I don't know. Hmm. I wish I could ask you guys what you think. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I guess I'll just stick with light brown. Maybe it's best to play it safe. <laughs> but that would be cool if one of you guys do it like I did and then you pick blue instead. Or if you use kind of the same colors but you do it in a different order, that would be cool. I love seeing all kinds of different approaches to the same kind of thing. That's so much fun seeing how creative you guys are. All right. And again, I'm going to turn my paper so it's a little easier to color this area out of diagonal. One of the nice things about outlining in black marker as well is it gives you a little bit of wiggle room to color a little bit more wild. So you don't have to be as worried about going outside the lines. Now if you're still going like, woo, crazy coloring, then yeah, you're 
it's not going to help you. <laughs> but if you just have a problem going a little bit outside the lines every now and then, this little barrier of an outline is going to help you a ton. All right, um, I think that's pretty much all of the things that I wanted to teach you in this video. So just make sure that you are coloring nicely. We spent about 20 minutes. I guess we started with this paper, but um, you do need to make sure that you're spending some time to make this look good and beautiful and not scribble scrabbly. So this is not what you want to be going for. Make sure you're on this good side. So finish your coloring get your picture taken again, post it to me on Schoology so I can get you a grade and hopefully you'll be getting nice, awesome, amazing grades because you are coloring like this. All right guys, I can't wait to see your owls and we'll have a new assignment next week. Bye.